So good morning, everyone. Welcome to this uh, Food Shift Governance and Strategy Workshop. My name is Sofia Parent. I'm Campaigns and Policy Coordinator at Sustain. We're a food and farming organization in the UK. We're an alliance of over 100 different organizations, all working for a better food and farming system. So many of you are familiar with Food Shift. Others might be new. But this is an EU-funded project aimed at achieving citizen-driven transition to a better food system. And the citizen-driven is really important here. And Sustain is one of 30 partners in this project. Partners include municipalities around Europe, small and medium enterprises, non-governmental organizations, research institutes from 12 different countries. And we work in depth with nine food accelerator labs. The acronym is FALS. So these nine uh, different cities or city regions around Europe are involved in depth in the, in the program. In addition, we work with 33 food enabler labs. The acronym is FALS um, around many different countries all over Europe. So you'll hear these acronyms throughout the meeting, FALS and FALS. Um, so hopefully you'll remember what they are. And this workshop is part of a work package in Food Shift, which is called Multiplying the Impact. So this is about reaching even more places around Europe that are interested in working at a local level to transform the food system. So we hope that a lot of what we're learning through Food Shift, a lot of the resources we're creating are useful to your particular situation. So <coughs> some of you might be coming from places that are a FAL, so a food accelerator lab like Bari. We have our, our colleague from, from Bari here, Lorenzo, who will be speaking later. Some of you might be from a FAL, a food enabler lab. Some of you might be coming from new places that are now starting to, to engage in, in food shift. But Hopefully, all of you will take something that is really useful to the work you're trying to achieve at a local level. So this is the first of a series of four workshops that Sustain will be leading on. Well, uh, yeah, and okay. these workshops are really aimed at disseminating what we're learning through food shifts to places beyond this, this network. So please continue to attend these workshops into 2023. And the best way to ensure you're not missing when the next uh, workshop will be announced is to sign up to our Food Shift Plus email list. Uh, and my colleague is going to, to paste in the chat um, how you can sign up. It's really easy and it's a place to carry on the discussion uh, when this workshop ends. It's a really great place. It's full of like-minded people. Um, so I'm from Sustain. I have my colleague Stephanie Kennedy here with me, also from Sustain. She's communications, communications and learning coordinator. And to help us deliver this workshop, we have our colleague Ben Messer and my colleague Victoria Williams. And they're from another UK organization called Food Matters. And they're really the experts and in empowering uh, people to strengthen policy and change the food system. So I'm going to pass on to my colleague, Ben Messer, who is going to lead us on this workshop. Thank you very much, Ben. Thank you very much, Sophia. Um, good to see you all. Um, as Sophia says, I'm Ben Messer. I'm from Food Matters. Um, it's a small charity located in the south of England. Uh, in Brighton. Um, Food Matters was very involved in the uh, in uh, very uh, early days starting of the Brighton No Food Partnership and a lot of experience that we have was built up during that time. But we're also now part of the Sustainable Food Places program alongside Sustain, where Sophia and S Stephanie are based, and also the Soil Association. So through that we're working with a network of nearly 90 um, food partnerships around the UK um and growing every day we get new uh, members um wanting to apply every day so it, there's a large body of experience and that experience i'll tell you more about it when we start talking about the resources that the sustainable food places program has available and that are accessible and can be shared 
so welcome everybody hello it's great to see you all um we get, we've got a session here which is timed at an hour and a half and if it's okay with everybody we're going to go straight through that hour and a half without a, a, a break so if you need to take a break please obviously just go ahead um if you want to say anything on on the screen to anybody um please um use the chat function on zoom put your questions in there but also put your hand up like this and one or other of us will see you when you do that either that or use the reactions button and just raise a hand i think it's still worth explaining some of these functions on uh, zoom even though we're getting quite used to using them these days um the approach is going to be quite participatory um, we're going to be trying to encourage you to sort of share your experience with each other. And I think for that purpose, if at all possible, and I know it's not possible for everybody, but if possible, if you keep your camera on, that means that you can actually see each other, particularly when we're in the breakout rooms. In a, in a part of the session like this, it's not so important where we're just um, putting across some information. But in the breakout rooms and in the discussions, it'd be really good if we um, could all see each other. It makes it feel more participatory immediately. Um, the only other thing I'm going to say is that we've got three sections to the uh, session today. The first section is about sharing an approach to engagement and thinking together and sharing perspectives. The second part of the program that you will have <laughs> seen agenda, hopefully, is about resources that have been made available and as i say through the sustainable food places program i'll just talk about that a little bit and um uh, my colleague beatrice valthal will also be sharing some of the resources in the toolkit for the food shift to um with you as well so we'll take a little time to do that and give you a guided tour of those the final section is uh, providing some inspiration from two places um, a colleague Alex Britton Zondani is going to be talking a little bit about East Sussex and some experience there in the south of the of the UK. And um, we've also got Lorenzo Bellarte, who's going to be sharing some um, of his La Bellarte, sorry, from um, Bari and from uh, Taranto in particular. And we'll get onto that at the end of the session. OK, that's the plan anyway. We'll try and stick to the agenda and we'll see how we get on. So. I'm just going to give a very quick introduction based on some of the experience that we have in Food Matters and the Sustainable Food Places program. Um, we found that the effectiveness of food partnerships and food strategy is largely dependent on the engagement of people and communities. Um, quite often in a session, people will say, um, when we talk about food systems, what is the food system? Um, and the way I usually respond is to say, it's not something over there. It's you in this room. You are your food system, particularly if you have a room full of stakeholders and people who have an interest in the food sector and different parts of the food sector. They are the food system of a place and their engagement is absolutely important, uh, vitally important. And the purpose of that engagement is to try and build a good food movement for that place, whatever that place is. You're in different places. Um, this movement of good food in that place depends on the involvement and the engagement and the participation of different communities and different interests within your food system. And this is achieved through representation, bringing in those different perspectives, sharing those perspectives, partnership working, collaboration, and through that building a sense of ownership of that process, and a sense of agency that you have some input to the decisions that are made going forward now that that's a bit of background and i'm sure you're all fully aware of that already but it was just to sort of set the scene a bit for what we're going to do now so what i'd like you to do in a bit of a practical exercise i'd like you to consider your place um, if you have a food partnership or a gathering of people around um, food work in your place, think of that as well. But think of your place. Now I want you to think about what a sustainable food future for that place could be like. Think about a sustainable food future for your place. I'm going to tie it down a little bit and say think five years ahead from now and think about a sustainable food future for your place. And what I want you to think about individually, first of all, is 
what three things would show you that progress is being made towards a sustainable food future for your place? So we're thinking of your place, we're thinking five years from now, what three things would show you that progress is being made? So take maybe a couple of minutes to think through what you would want to see, what would be going on, what would be happening, who would be doing what, what would be in place. And we're going to try and capture this by giving you a link to Mentimeter, where we can collect your responses to that question that I'm asking you to consider. And we'd like you to just spend a couple of minutes, two or three minutes, thinking about your responses and putting them into that Mentimeter that we've, uh, we're just going to post the link up there. Thank you, Stephanie. If you go to Mentimeter, hopefully you'll be able to just enter three separate responses for your three things. And if you want to put your name against it so we know who's saying what, if you'd rather stay anonymous, don't put your name on it at all. But just um, enter your three things there. I'll give you a few moments to do that. If anybody has any questions or uh, ways to clarify that, um, please put your hand up and we'll try and respond to it. But Stephanie has posted the question there. So I'll keep quiet for two or three minutes and then we'll tell you what we're going to do next. Great. Well, I can see some responses coming into the Mentimeter in front of me here. I'm just going to leave it a little bit longer. And what we might do is once we start into the next stage, if you haven't quite finished it, we'll keep it running for a while. OK, and I'm just going to make a suggestion to Stephanie here is that we we probably don't share these responses at this point. We might do it after the next section. So what we're going to do now is ask you to split into smaller groups. So we're going to put you into groups of maybe five participants in this session. And we're going to ask you to, um, first of all, say a quick hello to each other and then share your responses, your three things that you have put down in the Mentimeter there or that you might still be thinking about and have a quick conversation about those three things. Um, you know, it, it's gonna be interesting because you're all from different places. So you may have quite different things that you want to talk about, but that could be quite interesting in itself. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna suggest to Stephanie that we do actually send you off into these rooms. We're going to put you there for about 15 minutes so that um, you can pace yourself a little bit. We will give you a heads up on how the timing is going in those 15 minutes so that, you know, um, if you've left someone out and haven't heard from someone, you can quickly have a quick chat with them uh, before we come back in the main room. But you're going to be in this room for about 15 minutes now. Have a quick conversation, say a quick hello and where you're from, but then share your three things. And then we'll come back into the, uh, the room together and have a conversation about that, if that's OK. OK, I 
can you give me a thumbs up if you're ready with that, Stephanie? Okay, so in about 15 minutes, we'll come back together. So it's at about 25 to 11. Sorry, Ben, I didn't realize we were in the same room. No, we're not in a room. I've come back into the main room. Okay, so okay. Roxana and Stella are still. So, Roxana, can you hear me? Can you see if she has been, uh, and Stella, I don't know if you can hear me, but have you been assigned a room? Yes, Roxana is in room six and it doesn't look like they have joined and Stella is in room four and it looks like they haven't joined either but can you, you hear us Stella Roxana oh and we also now have Erica Erica hi Erica well, you're unassigned let me assign you to hi. a room hi Erica hi let me just assign hi. you so, and nice to meet you. Sorry for being so late. No worries. I'm going to assign you to another room, Erica. Okay. Um, this is one moment. Okay. okay. And Stella, I don't know if you can hear. Oh, we've got another person just joined the session, which is Nancy. And yeah. Admit Erica. <laughs> Erica's going to wonder what on earth is going on. <laughs> I have assigned Erica to another room, but I it does, I don't know if this Maybe is just a Wi-Fi connection issue there because she's frozen for me. Yeah, same. Hmm. Three people entered the waiting room now. So Victoria, I'll let her back. <laughs> Victoria left the meeting. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> Rachel Robson. I'm just admitting people. Is that all right? Yes, of course. Yeah, so was I. Yeah. Did you do what I said, Vicky, and leave the session? I thought so. <laughs> you can't leave a room and come back to the main, it seems. Oh, you should be. I are you sure you didn't leave the meeting? Uh, well, I thought I said leave the room, but I must have left the meeting, left the meeting rather than leaving the room. Sorry, <laughs> hi, Rachel. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I was running a little bit late. Um, and I've no worries. To... Welcome. Do you mind Thanks. if I assign you to assign you to a breakout room? We're just in the of course, process yeah. of I meeting thought, each other. Okay, <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll assign you now. Uh, Thank you. One moment. And Nancy, I'm not sure if, if you're able to hear me, but I think you have actually been assigned a breakout room. Hello. Hi, my internet this morning is a total disaster. I don't know what's happening, but I've been kind of trying to get back in for the last 10 minutes. <laughs> oh, no. Just... Oh, sorry. Nancy, I'm going to try and assign you again to a room. Is that OK? Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Okay, right, it seems like everybody's in a room. Yeah. Nancy, I have assigned Nancy. Yeah. Well done. <laughs> yeah, I thought I'd left the room, but obviously I, I left the whole building. <laughs> <laughs> and the sign, Julia. Hello, Julia. Oh, Julia's in actually in room two, so I don't know <laughs> why she's also appearing here. Mm, that's interesting.
Okay, so there is a presentation mode. Rosario? Yes. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Hi, Rosario. Were you in a previous breakout room or have you? Yes, sorry, I'm a bit late, uh, but uh, because I thought I have already registered, but uh, apparently not. Okay, not a problem. We're currently in the process of uh, being in breakout rooms so that we can meet each other and just hear a bit more. So if you don't mind, I'm going to assign you to uh, a breakout because we're the the workshop organizers so so we're all a bit boring really you want to speak to the other people who uh, <laughs> okay. are, are here for the workshop like yourself so one moment I, I will assign you to a room Julia, I'm not. Just... Julia, can you hear me? You could have uh, uh, um, logged on twice. Mm, He's in think... the breakout room, and then this is just a. That's possible, yeah. I think so, yeah. The presentation mode on this sort of question is quite interesting. What do you mean? For which que what question? Which question? Meant to meet a question. All oh, right. Scrolling very slowly. Yeah. Right. So I could put it up and share screen so that people can see some of those responses. But um I think I will just mention to people that it's just really useful for us to have this collected and we will collate it. And um hi hi Terry. Um welcome. I see you've just joined us. Uh, mm, I dropped out of my breakout room and now I got back, so I probably got into the main room. Yeah. Okay. Did I? Would you okay. like to go? Would you Sorry. like? Shall I sh send you back to a breakout room? You can do that if you can. Do you remember which who you might have been with? Uh, what was it? Uh, Susan. I don't remember her name. Sorry. The with one the... one who talked in the beginning. Oh, with Sophia. Yeah. Sophia. Okay. Yeah. I'll I'll send you back there. Thanks. <laughs> So I think you do when you say exit room, it takes you out of the, I don't know why, takes you out of the whole meeting, I think. It shouldn't. That's I know shame. it shouldn't, but there wasn't yeah. another wasn't button it? to say, leave the room. I'm, yeah, because obviously like, that's Maybe just... it's something I set up then wrongly. Well, she okay. just said that, didn't she? That she left the room and got kicked out of the meeting, I thought. Did you just have to let her back in? Yeah, so. I just sent her back. No, but before that, did you have to let her back in the meeting or did she just come back to the main room? She did have to come back into the meeting. You're yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. So something about if you leave that, I'm just. Yeah, well, it should be all right because you'll send a, a, a thing saying the breakout rooms are going to close in 50 seconds, seconds or something. So that yeah. should bring everyone back rather than leaving the meeting. Yeah. Have a mass exodus of the whole meeting. End of. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> we don't like what you said. Uh, yes. Out. <laughs> Isn't it funny we've got the exact number of participants that we anticipated? Yeah. 40. Well, obviously you've done enough to know that it's interesting though, knowing which ones where you'll get less than have signed up and where you get the full kind of mm. the full lot. Yeah. <laughs> we just did it with our sustain annual conference we majorly oversubscribed um oh and, and how was it in terms and then of... we were so stressed and then like what are we going to do if everybody turns up and 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 it didn't uh, there was a 50 percent drop yeah, yeah yeah 
so we feel fairly confident now yeah that, that that's just a trend really um, yeah it's interesting, isn't it? Because I mean, you know, before COVID, when you we you did in person events, you always have dropout, and then you yeah. sort of then you had a sort of a thing about you know returnable deposits and that sort of stuff to make sure people came. So I wonder, <laughs> I wonder if Zoom sessions will get to that point. Yes. 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 Not charging, but I mean, it does impact on potentially how you run a session. If you know, if you're going from a hundred to 40 it does make a difference potentially absolutely especially if it's something like it, it, you know in in this style you know workshop yeah. breakout rooms you know yeah and if you want facilitated breakout rooms you know that would potentially yeah. have a massive I feel because this is all a very kind of very specific very niche topic mm. you do get you know to, to sign up to this and not really have much interest it's quite yeah uh, you've you know, either got a lot of time on your hands or <laughs> I, so I feel that we always have such dedicated people, you know, that come along mm. and want to, you know, so, so they would try. Um, but Ben, can I quickly ask the way this is presenting, as you said, it's a very slow scroll up. Yeah. Um, I'm thinking we... what I might do is I've just been through that scroll. And the really interesting thing <laughs> is that there's a massive range of different mm. suggestions of three things, which is what you would hope. There's some about production, there's some about procurement. I'm just going to say this, access, governance and processes for governance, equity and climate impact is all in there, which is really interesting. Um, I might just share screen and show that as they scroll by, but then I will unshare um, and open up a conversation. Is there anything that surprised you or interested you from the conversation? And I'll go through some of those questions I put down, but does that Brilliant. make sense? That's, that makes sense. Yes. Good to know. Yeah. Just to know who's doing what. Um, as for afterwards, when I share that link with everybody, will it always be in this mode of these like uh, moving we'll have tiles? Look. We'll have to have a look because yeah. I'm not sure. I'm really not sure that there, there are different modes where you just have different slides, but I mm. haven't seen that yet. Um, I but that link will remain valid, right? That link will always host all the answers. So it's just holding on to that and making sure making sure it's saved yeah. yes um could you give them a five minute warning this is a thing that you can do on the breakout i might be able to do it actually you can broadcast a thing yeah. if you can broadcast to the breakout rooms five more minutes okay sorry to jump on you there and oh, i can see my colleague izzy in the... i'll oh, broadcast it... a message yeah <laughs> that's quite funny when victoria goes i can see a colleague sitting behind her there is that helen behind is that helen behind you there victoria? no it's uh emma she started the food partnership yesterday oh. <laughs> <laughs> i was not sure whose whose head it was i was seeing there hi emma <laughs> <laughs> it's right. nice to meet you Right, I put my blanket back on. <sighs> so, we're sort of going to be on time, I think. We'll try and go into the sort of toolkit bit at quarter two still, if that's that gives us 10 minutes for a quick roundup of some of what people have been talking about. Are we bringing people back now then or? Um, we just gave them a five minute warning. Right.
All participants have been given 60 seconds, so they're back in 60 seconds. Brilliant. <clears throat> oh, it's interesting to see who's there. Room one is quite busy. Yeah, I don't know how that got so... Uh... I can see some good friends. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. We'll just um, wait for people to come back from their, their breakout rooms. Hello again, everybody. Welcome back. Well, I didn't actually dip into any of the breakout rooms this time, so I'm not exactly sure what your conversations were about. Hopefully you were responding to the question that was posed. But I think what would be quite useful, if anybody has anything that um, either really interested them or surprised them from the conversations that they've just had, just put your hand up and share it with us. If there's something that jumped out to you as something, oh, I wasn't expecting that, or that's really interesting. I'd like to know more about that. Does anyone want to share anything that that came up in their conversations just now? Yes, Beatrice. Yes, um, I liked in our group how uh, broad the visions were. So they were from really, really big concepts. Um, to very concrete practical elements. So I really like the diversity and it ranged from small things like having diverse food infrastructures, more food hubs, for instance, um, peri-urban, urban agriculture, um, reducing food waste, but then also going bigger to concepts of agroecology, um, cross-sectoral food governance, concepts of the bioregion or biocultural region. So there were very, um, it was a broad spectrum and I liked how the people all had a very nice vision. We were all um, very like-minded. That's good. We'd sort of hope that there would be a good vision, wouldn't we? <laughs> yeah. The sort of people that we have gathered in this room today. But um, thank you for that, Beatrice. And yes, that tallies with my quick look through the Mentimeter results. But does anybody else have anything they want to share from the conversation that they've just had? Something that sort of interests yeah. in particular. Yes, Kate. Um, I just want to, it's just an observation, I wonder what people feel, but it's not a question, but um, we were just discussing whether how important food growing is, because from my perspective, teaching everyone to grow, having access to um, funded courses that are well attended and access to public spaces, someone mentioned that their council was doing community asset mapping, but how important kind of food reliance on growing yourself and communities having access to becoming sustainable and growing, how that kind of feeds into the also wider picture of education about for healthy food and access to food, as opposed to just distribution, we were looking at, you know, the importance of growing your own. Does anybody have a response to that? Thanks, Kate. Does anybody have any thoughts on that? The, the sort of importance of food growing? I know from my own experience of working with food partnerships, particularly recently, that, uh, that food growing um, is right at the core of starting to make a move away from the uh, focus on food access and food provision for vulnerable people. If you can then sort of transition towards a, a sort of active involvement in food production at, at a community level, that can be very interesting. I'll just put that in, but Maddie, you've got something to share there. Yeah, thanks. Um, yeah, there's a, I mean, at the sort of broad scale, there's a real crisis in terms of many farmers reaching retirement and no, many, many, two thirds <clears throat> um, have no succession plans in the UK. So there's, and they're all like 
average age 62 in the UK. So there's a real crisis in terms of we don't have uh, a, a national pathway um, for food producers. It's only just now that DEFRA has just done its first, is, it's very, you know, which Ubele is part of, um, the new entrant support scheme pilot which is very very narrow in scope and very short in its in its duration um so there there are there are very few pathways into the work but some lots of brilliant people are kind of working on making that more uh, yeah opening out the the opportunities um but yeah access to land and access to training are those two critical pieces that go hand in hand if we don't have the people and the land to grow the food then we go hungry it's it's so it's it must be widespread and in a vision of a of a kind of agroecological kind of peri-urban bioregional stuff it's my in my vision it's full of people yeah. who are work, who are working the land together so, Let's, uh, um, yes. thank you so much i think it is a challenge and a, a, a big challenge in the uk i just wanted to check whether any of our colleagues from elsewhere in Europe um, had the same challenges, faced the same challenges, new entrant to um, agriculture and agroecological food production. Um, are, do you face the same challenges around that route to, to farming and also, um, uh, you know, responding to what Maddie just said there? Any, any comments anyone would like to make? Yes, Roxana. Hello, uh, so I'm a Romanian living in France, and I know the situation is similar in France. So in uh, 10 years, 50% of the farmers will be retired, and it's a very important issue. And as a Romanian, uh, it has been linked uh, to um, understanding how food is produced, uh, to seasonality, to uh, it's very it's very important to. Uh, understand the dependence we have on the private sector of the food system, how dependent we are. And as long as we don't uh, realize the gap we have between uh, uh, our competencies and the food production, it's very hard for us to become uh, more autonomous in uh, as actors of the food system. So um, it's, it's, not, it's important to understand and uh, by producing, for example, being involved in the actual uh, producing uh, Food, it's, it's a way to uh, raise awareness how, uh, how disconnected we are, how depending, uh, how dependent on the system, Absolutely. especially on the right factors. Okay, so let's do Brilliant. Thank you, Roxana. I completely agree around this sort of, um, yes, it's at the root of everything, but it is connected to everything if we're talking about food systems as well. So big challenges. Um, I'm not going to dwell too much on this, uh, the responses, other than to say my quick look through the Mentimeter uh, responses that were logged there. And as Beatrice has already pointed out, it's very wide ranging at different dimensions. Some of it very detailed, practical. Some of it is about process as well, about processes of governance, about hearing different voices, about collective decision making. Um, and about um, you know how you, how you organise that, and we will be talking a little bit more about that later on in this session. Uh, but yes, we will make the Mentimeter responses and results available. We'll share that. We need to work out exactly what mode to share it in. At the moment, it's in a very slow scrolling screen of a really interesting points, but it's quite difficult to share that um, on the screen now. Um, I suppose what I would like you to consider is the learning from that process that you've just been through of sharing your thinking. That's what we were trying to put across by asking a, a fairly broad question, looking in five years time in your place, what three things you'd be looking at um, in terms of a sustainable food future. It's that process of sharing thinking. You've all come from different places, but it, it does demonstrate that actually getting people with different perspectives together is absolutely vital if we're talking about engagement, representation and building sustainable food systems going forward. Um, this process of uh, we've done it on a screen now, but doing it in a room is even better. Um, and I've seen large groups of people in rooms around a big question like this really becoming 
energized by the question, really becoming energized by what they're hearing from each other. And that's what I was trying to demonstrate by doing this in these breakout rooms and then a little bit of sharing now in this in the in the large room. This, I hope you can you can visualize um, is the basis really for building shared visions, um, looking maybe at the sort of outcomes you would like to be aiming towards. This is the first step in doing that. It's like a little nibble at the whole big picture that we're going to be uh, trying to develop around food strategies. Really important to that is actually capturing what you hear, making sure that perspectives and the feeling that people can actually have agency in this is not just floated out there and yes, yes, everybody agrees, or that's a good idea, or I'm not sure about that. It needs to be documented, it needs to be captured, and to some extent it needs to be distilled into some sort of clearer, um, analysed statement of what we think we're hearing from people in your food system, and in your food sector. And that can be done in different ways. We've used Mentimeter just now. You could use um, just a Google document to actually capture what people are saying. One of the tools I've used a lot in this sort of work when I'm working remotely is uh, a Miro board, which is the equivalent of a, a whiteboard, like an interactive whiteboard, where you can get people to do this sort of thing, post-it notes, but remotely. Um, as I say, it's much better in person. It's much better when you're all gathering around a flip chart with pens and post-its and crayons and anything you want to, to try and first of all get people's individual thinking but then maybe look at common thinking and try and understand if there are themes emerging that numbers of people are considering as their sustainable food future the next steps beyond this would be to sort of dig deeper into what might be missing you 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 will do this in a, in a way that i've just thrown a question at you and you've responded with a bit more thought, you might think, actually, we've missed a major thing here. And you might want to go back to your group and say, look, we haven't really talked about climate impact or something. Hopefully that wouldn't be one of the ones that is missed, but we maybe haven't thought much about food, um, what you do with um, surplus food. Maybe that's something that would have to come in and you'd have to dig a dip, bit deeper and maybe fill some gaps. But the point would be, this is the start, this sort of conversation that you've just had. The next bit would be to flesh that out and begin to think, yeah, if those are our objectives, that's where we want to get to our outcomes. What's already happening in our place, which is helping us get there? You now, who's doing stuff already? And to maybe start to bring that together into your thinking, you could map it or you could just document it there's this bit of work which is really helping us achieve this aim. Once you understand what's already happening, you may already be able to identify maybe what should be happening alongside that. Particularly at a time like this, where all over Europe we are facing constraints, a lot of people are facing situations where they're vulnerable, particularly around food, um, but other things, energy as well. But um, you might not want to take it all on in one go. It's a massive thing to look at a, a food system response um, when you're looking across a whole food system. It might be better to say, you know, where is the buzz in our place at the moment? Where is the energy? Where is the best place to start this process of moving towards that food future? And to, you know, there's this phrase, you could pick the low hanging fruit the easier to achieve outcomes might be a good place to start where there is already energy. And this is what we find ourselves talking about with food partnerships across the UK, at least at the moment. Where have we got some energy that we can build on that we know contributes to our longer term vision and our longer term sustainable food future? You can also look at who needs to be involved in doing that. You may have a good representation of your food system in the room, but you may also recognize that there are people who are missing and they may need to be encouraged to join in and become part of the, the process. So those were my 
my thoughts that I wanted to share with you from my experience of how what you've just done um, and demonstrated is the importance of bringing in those different perspectives, hearing from different people and as many different people as possible to try and capture what Beatrice said is this multi-dimensional detail as well as broader scope suggestions of what your food future looks like. That's when the, the, the interesting and possibly harder work then starts. Would anyone like to um, ask anything or, con or contribute a thought to what I've just said there before we move on? Diana. Do we have Diana who'd like to say something? Sorry, I can't find the hand to put up under reactions. Um, yeah, I just wanted to ask Ben. So, you know, everything you say makes sense to me. Um, I'm from a, a, the third sector. So obviously we work fairly closely with our local authority. But I, I think for me, it's kind of trying to work out who should be the leaders in uh, setting up that sort of vision. Um, obviously, uh, we'd want everyone to contribute to it, but in terms of actually even organising such an event, is it largely local authorities that organise those or is it other organisations? I can talk from my experience in sustainable food places and it's diverse. There's no one size fits all. There are some very good um, third sector led um, food partnerships. And um, I can see some on the screen in front of me. I know people who are in these situations and their struggle is developing a balance with local authority players, making sure that they um, are representing their communities, but at the same time, not being overwhelmed by the agendas of the local authority. If it's the other way around and it's sort of housed in the local authority. They're absolutely desperate to get the third sector involved. So the representatives from community organizations and community initiatives are there as well. So it, it works in both directions. But I would say that if you're looking at a whole food system approach, you need to have some of those champions within your local authority around public health, around the environment, around local economy. They need to be in the room with you but on an equal basis with the people who are representing communities and, and representing community initiatives. Um, I don't know if anybody else wants to comment on that, but that's from my experience. It's not a great answer, but it's you need it all and you need to find the right people. And it quite often is specific, particular people, personalities, champions within your local authority who really get it. Does anyone else want to add anything to that? Hi, Trin. Yes, go ahead. Hi, yes. Um, sorry, I thought I could contribute because I am one of the, I suppose, third sector led, or in theory, I'm one of the third sector led um, food partnerships. Um, but how honest should I be? Um, it is, as Ben said, it's honestly, it's sometimes it's really difficult sharing the power. It's really difficult alongside the, the local authority. Um, they will, they've got their own things that they need to achieve, so you kind of need to work out balance. I haven't really figured out a good balance yet, but I've still got time, I think, so <laughs> there's that. Um, but yeah, I think if, if you're going to set up your own and you don't have something like that in place already, then finding ways to kind of deliberately set it out so that you have equal power from the start is probably a really good way of trying to do it. Yeah, I would really suggest, thank you so much, Chen, it's great to see you, but Diana, have a chat with Trin after this, maybe, because she's got good experience. I can also see um, Sam from Haringey on the screen as well. She would be a good person to talk to about this balance, finding this balance. Um, I am aware of the time, and we do have, have to sort of try to stick to time here, but um, talk with each other. And I'm going to say Trin and Sam, who I can see on the screen right in front of me. Alex, who's going to be talking later, later um, also is a food coordinator in Islington. So, you know, there's some good people there with good experience about making that balance. Victoria, did you want to add something? Uh, well, only I just wanted to ask um, Beatrice from her experience of Food Shift, whether that's a similar situation in the, the different places that are involved with Food Shift in Europe. Yes, I can fully second that. It is really diverse and it depends on the local spirit, on the on the DNA of the community who takes a leadership. 
and also what works. Is it more top down, bottom up? Sometimes it's very mixed. In the case of Berlin, it was citizens that started building the visions, but then they got a hearing in the local government, and now the local government is um, actively involved and tries to include an even bigger community. So it is very diverse, yes. Brilliant. I'll just add that um, both Trin and Sam, who I just mentioned, have both put their their email addresses in there for you, Diana, in the chat. So thank you, Trin and Sam, for doing that. I think part of this session is about making those connections as much as anything. So um, again, conscious of the time, I'm just going to move on. I'm going to be very quick. But um, as I mentioned, I um, work for Food Matters, but Food Matters is part of the Sustainable Food Places program. Um, we support the Sustainable Food Net uh, Program Network. Um, uh, I'm just going to check with Victoria. Can you see? the SFP website there that I've just shared. Great. This website, hopefully, um, you can see that on your screens, is the Sustainable Food Places program website. And um, there's a lot of information on it, but I'm going to focus on one thing. If you haven't seen it already, I would suggest this is a good place to go for some resources around what we're talking about today. On the um, the main banner across the top, you can see this blue tab at the top here, which is the SFP toolkit. I'm just going to talk very briefly about that. Um, I'm going to open the toolkit. The toolkit it is really a, um, a, a collection of resources. Um, I've made a couple of toolkits in the past for different mm -hmm. projects. This one, I'm hoping, is as accessible and navigable as possible. They are, the tools are collected, you can see down in the right hand column here, um, the resource there and the type of the tool there explaining what you're looking at, either a guide or a tool. A guide is explaining the background um, and the information you need to understand part of what goes on in building a food partnership, developing a strategy or reviewing um, what you're doing. So there are three sections to the toolkit. Um, which are under these themes here, building a food partnership, you can see in pink at the top there. There are different processes, engagement, vision, structure, practical advice. And for each of those different processes, there are a range of different resources that you can have easy access to. So the theme, building a food partnership. The second theme, developing a food strategy. Again, a lot of the, the process that I just demonstrated with you is included in some of these tools here as well. But here we can see a way of understanding your food system better by developing an overview or mapping it, listening to people through different ways of um, consulting them, developing a food strategy and even developing an action plan which helps you deliver your food strategy. And then the final section on reviewing and refreshing your partnership and the way it works and your strategy and the way it's delivered. There's a final one at the bottom and an extra one, which is a guide to remote working, which um, I developed during the, um, the pandemic, just so that people could facilitate in, in the way this session is being facilitated and some of the tools and tricks that you can use to actually make um, sessions like this. Um, I'm not going to say much more. It really is a matter of exploring what's there, but I'm going to take you just to the developing a food strategy section and I'm going to point out some of what I think are really useful tools and quickly go into them. So the food focus group facilitation, it's a tool, so it has some real practical information about how you go about facilitating a session with a food focus group. And the way it's laid out is an explanation, an introduction to what we're talking about, how to plan it, maybe designing your program and why an, a facilitator might be a useful thing to consider. I'm a facilitator, that's why I put it in as something that's really important. Um, and the sort of questions that you could ask. This doesn't include the question that we just asked now, but um, it could equally um, involve a long-term vision type question. What do you want to see? What three things to distill it right down? What one thing would show you that you have a sustainable food system? Great broad questions to get the thing moving, to get the ball rolling. Tools and activities, and then actually some of the practical things of how you run these sessions. 
um, an evaluation. You know, there's a lot of tools there. I won't go into detail, but you can see as I scroll through there. Look, there's a, um, a, a an outline of a of a particular session that I ran around the AME food poverty, a specific group, a specific theme, a specific question, sequence of questions, and what you might hope to get out of it. So I just run through one example there of what this would look like um, if you wanted to um, explore a bit more. There's a very good tool here on food summits, um, large groups of people coming together, sharing perspectives, developing visions, a an action planning guide here. The guide is really excellent. It gives lots of information, partly written by a colleague of mine, Sarah Davies, who no longer works with us, but a really useful tool and an outline of a workshop you could run there as well. The only thing I would say is that these tools are not just thought about and developed. They are based on experience. They're based on the experience that I have working with food partnerships before Food Matters was part of the Sustainable Food Places program. But since then, they are based on real experience within the network, within those 80 or 90, nearly 90 food partnerships. We learn from them, we bring their experience together and we put it into those resources that you can see in that toolkit, which is why it's so valuable. It's also a living toolkit. It will continually be updated um, last month, I added a new uh, tool here, the Race, Equity, Diversity and Inclusion Assessment Tool, a really catchy little name, which we actually have abbreviated to READY, the READY Review Tool um, about race, about equity, about diversity, how to respond to Black Lives Matter, employing a coordinator even more recently that was put in. That's specifically to how you coordinate a food partnership. Um, so it, 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 it's added to every month almost. I'm not going to say much more than this, other than a lot of the tools here also feature in the toolkit, which has been developed as part of the Food Shift program. Um, I'm going to hand over now to Beatrice Walthall, who's going to actually just give a, a similar guided tour of that um, toolkit that's now available to you. But Please make use of the SFP one. It's open access. Over to you. Thank Bea. you, Ben. Thank you, Ben. Um, yeah, my name is Beatrice Walther, and um, I'm a co-founder of the Berlin Food Policy Council, and I currently work at the Leibniz Center for Agriculture Landscape Research in the Food Shift 30, uh, 2030 project. And within that project, I'm a um, work package leader for governing the transition, the food system transition. And within this work package, we also develop food strategies and, and have very similar topics, topics like this workshop today for the, the meeting. Um, and within this project, we've developed um, a guide, which I would like to put your attention to. Can you see my screen now? Good. Um, which also links to the resources of sustainable food places. So it is, um, you can use both together, but it also has a specific focus. So this guide was um, developed with a food shift together with uh, some partners from eFOM, but also Sustain, uh, Food Matters contributed and supported it greatly, but also experiences from our um, practical cases like Austin, Barcelona, Berlin, and previous experiences. And the specific focus of this guide is the civic driven food system governance. Um, that means that it starts with the values, with, uh, with practices, with experiences from, from people and communities that then feed into the information process, the vision building and the decision making. Mm. And this is a, basically a step by step guide for practitioners and um, and yeah has certain recommendations, exercises, and further material to develop a food strategy um, in a civic driven, participatory, and deliberative process. And here you can see a summary how to use it, glossary. But what I want to point out is yeah that the guide um, contains basically five steps. 
um, that are common in a development process, which is the initiation, assessment, stakeholder engagement, vision building, action planning, and evaluation. But these steps don't have to be followed in a chronological order. So you can also, like if you find yourself deeper in the vision building, you can jump right there um, or go in a different order. You can also first do the vision building and then uh, start somewhere else. So it's not mandatory to follow in this order, but the guide has in-depth views on each of these steps accompanied by um, exercises, material. For instance, you can see for the initiation is the storytelling, food system mapping, find your partner, backcasting for vision building or track your efforts. And yeah, like I said, you can either go through each individual step or you can uh, jump and dive deeper into one step. And um, this process is also not limited to building a food strategy, but it can also be used for many other processes in building food partnerships and so on. So it's somewhat general and somewhat specific. And let me jump to, because we talked about the vision building here, you can always see like, some introductions, uh, some templates. Beatrice, how... just a request for clarification in the chat. What is backcasting? Yes, that's where I will actually jump to. It's a great question. Um, mm -hmm, vision building here. So for building a vision, we have some text again. Um, we have an example from Bristol, who uh, people are also here, I saw. And how to build a vision could be done through many different exercises. One version is backcasting. And we have a um, description what it is. It's basically a method for developing a uh, desirable future, present pathways, where you start in the future and then walk backwards. That's why it's called backcasting. So you first start with the future, kind of what we did with the exercise earlier, where you asked what are three ingredients for your future food system. And once you have the vision clear, you can go step by step backwards um, with your desired and future in mind, what needs to happen to get there, uh, which actions need to take place, which barriers or challenges need to be overcome. And then you can walk backwards to your present. And quite often this involves a great brainstorming um, exercise where you then decide on priorities and, and select some potential activities, but you can find this in the guide a little bit more uh, detailed explanation than I can give right now. And then also like Ben mentioned, after you've formulated a vision, it quite is often that you have to flesh it out. So then the next template is for planning actions, a really detailed guide on how you can connect your strategic uh, goals with operational goals, with actions, resources, and people. So all of this you can also find in the guide. And we suggested for each step alternative formats. Um, for instance, you can also find many of the resources for the sustainable food places that links back to the website that Ben just showed to the, the tools and the guides, but also from Leapfrog, for instance, um, sometimes there are other, other resources. Yes, and that's how the guide continues helps you to set priorities, um, also evaluating your own actions. For instance, we have um, selected those four bigger topics, how you can evaluate your own project by looking at your actions, the organizations, the process and the outcome. And then on the next page, you find a template again. This is relatively general. So any project, any of your activities can be um, evaluated with it because it's somewhat general, where you get a first overview and maybe get a first reflection, but this is of course, um, this is not deep enough. This is a, a, to inspire you to reflect on your actions and your process and your organization outcomes, but then you need a follow-up reflection later on, but just you so you don't forget it um, while moving along the way, so you don't head to the wrong stars. Yes. Um, and there's also, I think, a link in the chat to where you can find the guide and the blog post on the Food Shift website that explains this in a, in a short way. And this is, as I mentioned, um, open source, usable for everyone. You don't have to be 
an active participant in food shift. Um, it's fine if you were in the network and you uh, sign up to the newsletter, you get also more information. Yes, that's a really quick dive into the, the guide we have. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Beatrice. And thank you for being quick. I know there's loads and loads of stuff there. and We wanted to really give a bit more time for it, but we've just dived through there. Um, please explore yourselves and go and have a look. I'm not going to pause. I'm going to go straight into our final section because I want to give enough time for you to hear and get some inspiration from two different perspectives. Um, I'm going to introduce you very quickly to Lorenzo Levelarte and also to Alex Britton Zondani. And we're going to have a bit of a conversation around their experiences of working around these issues of governance, um, involving people, making sure different voices are represented. Um, I'll just go to Lorenzo just to say a quick hello and explain where you're from. And then I'll go to Alex and do the same. And then we'll dive into our conversation, if that's OK. Hey, I am Lorenzo. I'm from uh, Siambari. Uh, we are an intergovernmental organization. Uh, we have 13 state members and we operate mainly in the Mediterranean. We also are a realization partner of the Ministry of uh, uh, Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation, the Italian Ministry. And uh, we are working a lot with the European projects related to food. Brilliant. Thank you, Lorenzo. And Alex. Do you want to say a quick hi? Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Alex. I've been working with Food Matters on a short term project um, in East Sussex um, with all of their local food partnerships. Um, that's a county in uh, south of the UK. And uh, I've also been uh, the chair of the Islington London Borough Food Partnership for the past four years. So I can speak to a little bit of both. Brilliant. Thanks, Alex. I must suggest to everybody, if you haven't done it already, top right hand corner of your screen, it says view. Um, if you click there, you can choose to go to speaker view. And then as we have the conversation, you'll see just there the main speakers talking. Uh, we will go back to gallery after that so that we can pick up questions from people. Brilliant. OK, I'm going to um, go to Lorenzo first and I'm going to pose this question. Um, we're talking about bringing together local food initiatives and partnerships into a wider food movement. Um, how has this been achieved where you are in Taranto and Bari? How have you done it there? Well, I, I will start with the, with the experience of Bari because this allowed us to somehow replicate what we do, what we did also in Taranto. So what is the starting point of this, the food shift project for sure? Uh, the food shift project was the opportunity for us to have, uh, uh, to develop this, uh, sustainable land use at the, at the very beginning this was the purpose our objective was sustainable land use and short supply chain for young entrepreneurs based on uh, social innovation approaches so we started thinking about uh, what what we can do with uh, for, for achieving this objective so we scout, we scouted 10 initiatives 10 experiences we uh, in 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 a, a first phase uh, which are uh, the, the, the partners that we are uh, uh, involved uh, as a food shift uh, innovators, uh, we call them innovators. Uh, then we started the phase two, it is the dialogue with stakeholders and gathering input related to food transition, which means um, gathering information from stakeholders coming from the four Alex approach. So we, we reasoned with this living lab approach involving the citizens, the academia, the business, and uh, research. Um, then we started in this uh, gathering of information, uh, inputs, and stuff uh, to uh, identify what, was, what were the barriers uh, related to the food, the food transition. And then we started the co-design of the solutions. Now, these co-designs of the solutions uh, brought us to three main solutions, which are intertwined. On one end, we have, we have the manifesto, that is our local food strategies, which came from uh, all the inputs that we received from the local stakeholders with, uh, related to food. Then to support the communication 
and the the the, the, the power of this of the of the, this manifesto, we developed the, the platform, uh, uh, we, we uh, which is called the Chiba 2030, uh, which allows new innovators to jump in in the discussion in the, in the, in, the, in the wider discussion related to food transition, and at the same time allow citizens to be informed about what is happening. Uh, in the metropolitan city uh, related to food transition. And then the, it, it, it is, uh, there is uh, the third solution, which is uh, connected with all of them because it's a network of innovators. So a network of innovators, which has been created thanks to uh, the inputs from the manifesto, which is uh, uh, fueled with the platform and uh, for sure, uh, thanks to the, uh, the synergies and initiatives that the innovators themselves uh, uh, right. propose. Thank so that you. was, uh, yeah. That's great, Lorenzo. That's really interesting. Um, the very first thing you said was it started with sustainable land use, sustainable food production. Yeah. That resonates with the very first question we had in this session about the importance of food production at yeah. the root of all of this. And that was your starting point. But there you have manifesto and the enactment of that manifesto through local initiatives. So your manifesto is your strategy, your vision, if you like. But yeah, yeah really, really interesting. I like that. Thank you very much. I'm going to ask the same question to Alex to, to sort of briefly take us through her perspective on the same question applied to this um, county, East Sussex in the south of England. Yeah, and a, a, a different approach, which, which is interesting. So um, in East Sussex, uh, there are five local districts and boroughs, all with kind of fairly different contexts. Some are more urban, some are more rural than others. And over the past couple of years, they've each um, set up and um, have been running their lo own local food partnerships, obviously very focused initially on the pandemic and reacting to food poverty and insecurity. Um, and those are mostly funded by uh, the County Council through public health. And it was kind of recognised that that structure, you know, they've been very successful on the ground and galvanising people locally and supporting with that kind of crisis. But obviously, there's a bit of a gap there in terms of the broader food systems work, things that happen at a county or a regional level, procurement, climate comms all of these types of things um, and how can there be structures set up to support um, and provide that infrastructure to the local food partnerships to be able to to implement their work and um, so that's where food matters was brought in and we since July um, until last month um, we did a bit of a short-term project we started off with doing a, a lot of just desk research and interviews trying to be introduced to as many people as possible both people from within East Sussex but also from across the country um, that could share their experiences and good practice um, and kind of interviewing people both at a county level and a local level as well bringing that together into a collection of, of information that we thought could be helpful for um, kind of getting people interested in exciting and see, seeing the benefit in investing in this food systems work. Um, we then held a series of local workshops, one in each of the district and boroughs, and then um, culminating in a county-wide food summit. Uh, we had um, over 150 people attend in total at all of those, so really well attended and shows the amount of people that were already kind of very invested in this work. Um, and then we brought together a series of recommendations um, that we just kind of published last month, so they're still kind of being looked at and implemented um, and I, I can talk a little bit more in detail about what what those were later Ben or do you want me to go into those now is it helpful no I think um I was you're, you're already talking a little bit both your, yourself and Lorenzo about the organization the structuring the framework mm. that has been used in both of those examples of how to move towards this good food movement or sustainable food system in a wider area based on initiatives in local areas which i think is interesting and the the really interesting thing the starting point in bari around sustainable food production in east sussex it was largely around people coming together around food provision for people who were um, facing vulnerability in terms of food access but same story we're looking at how you bring that together into a bigger picture for a wider area whether it's a county or whether it's bari that they're talking about um, I think it might be interesting to sort of touch on the challenges that have been faced 
and and how you're going about addressing them um and if you could bring in what you wanted to then alex under those questions uh, do you think that would work for you maybe i'll go to lorenzo again first then and say so you know there you've got your manifesto, you want to enact it, you want to build in this local initiatives into a wider um, vision and movement. Yeah. What are the challenges and how are you facing them? For sure, what, the, 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 the biggest challenge is to keep the citizens involved. So to, to, to make the citizens involved on uh, what, what we are doing, uh, what the manifesto is, what is the importance of the manifesto, because, um, uh, uh, every meeting that we do is not given that you that you will have citizens participating in it. You have to fight for each meeting, for each uh, consultation round that you that you schedule for uh, inputs for your manifesto, from inputs for your future food policy. You have to fight every time. So this is the I think the main challenges, and for sure also to keep the uh, already involved innovators, so those with which we started this process, uh, to keep them involved as well. Because uh, the risk of, of, of this operation, it, uh, since it takes time to, to have a, 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 complete, a complete strategy, a, a, a very sustainable food policy, uh, since it, it, it gives time, somehow people you know, uh, get tired uh, in a certain time, but uh, yeah, and these are the main challenges, and uh, we are trying and, our best, you know. So this might be a tough question. How how are you addressing that? What um maybe maybe it's a work in progress. It's all a work in progress. Let's, yeah. let's, but how are you addressing, or how do you think you're going to address this question of um, uh, maintaining that engagement, that energy? How how are you doing that? Yeah, for sure. Uh, our platform helps us a lot uh, because it allows us to reach uh, um, a quite a quite good number of people because you know it's instant. Just give them a link and they will go to the platform. So the platform uh, they, is a website. We're talking. Yeah, about. yeah, yeah. I, I'm I'm uh, linking it right, right. here. It, it's uh, it, it's in Italian at the moment because it was uh, you know uh, developed for local for local. Uh, Food strategies, local innovators, local citizens. But now we are we are in, uh, in our way to translate also in English for others to to know and maybe get uh, our platform as an as as a best practice. You know, we yeah, <laughs> this our, yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, at the same time, uh, our our platform is the is the main instrument. At the same time, we are we are uh, constantly in contact with the, the several stakeholders. That is business association, citizens association, uh, local public authorities, just to you know keep the hype up. You know, yeah. <laughs> that's it. I'm going to start using that phrase. I've been using buzz for quite a long time, but I think keeping the hype up is rather a good phrase. I might, I might borrow that if that's okay, Lorenzo. Great. So communications, a website, making yeah. sure there's clarity about your manifesto and the putting across the the the. The sort of experience of people, the re, uh, you know, practical stuff that's going on. I'm going to uh, quickly go over to Alex as well then, and and ask the same question about, you know, East Sussex. What are the challenges being faced there around how you organise this, and and maybe go straight on to some of how this could be addressed going forward. Yeah, I mean, I think the key one that lots of people will recognise is obviously capacity and funding and the demands at the moment that pull people's time into kind of crisis response and being able to balance these kind of longer term actions, definitely. And, and that meant that everything that we recommended, we wanted it to be as low resource as possible. And at least in the beginning, before we've got additional funding to be able to take be taken on by people that are already working in this area. And so we set up a really informal Google group for anyone that's interested in the county-wide response so anyone can email and it only needs a small amount of maintenance as everyone's part of kind of one of those uh, types of groups so so you'll know and we recommended a kind of just taking a few key actions across different areas that people are already passionate about and working in and just giving people the autonomy to work on those actions together but at a higher level at a regional level to see what can be achieved and then 
you get again that can be kind of brought back into to making the the business case for that for further investment and i think one of the hardest things about that type of approach is obviously that when things are very informal that means they're very relationship based and so when they work they can work really well and we know how passionate people can be about food and that's one of the core strengths that we have in this movement um but also you know when it, when relationships do break down that can can make things difficult so we've tried to kind of make sure that we're introducing we've recommended introducing a senior board so that there can be senior level buy-in and kind of continuity across um the kind of months and years as this developed and you know in my work in Islington I spend a lot of time trying to just ensure that those relationships are strong and having informal meetings and going to the pub after a meeting and just make sure that people have the motivation to, to want to do the work as well. That's brilliant, Alex. And again, that resonates with something which we were talking about earlier in this session about this balance with local authorities, but also finding those people who get it, the people who can either be conduits for information and for energy, for hype, if you like, but also the ones who, who can really communicate what you're talking about and champion what's going on around food systems work and maybe if, particularly if we're talking about governance in local authorities to show how the food system is integral to many of their different agendas that are going on this whole idea of looking at what the agendas what the policies are and looking at how food fits into that is a really important bit of work and a lot of that i know has been done in east sussex with what you've been doing for food matters there Brilliant. Well, thank you both. Um, is there anything else you wanted to say, actually, before we, we finish and with regard to your experiences there? You know, I think you've given us a lot of inspiration. It might be worth just also asking if there's anybody else in the room who wants to ask you just we've got like five minutes left. Any um, questions that you want to put to either Lorenzo or Alex around the, the, the what you've just been hearing about their experiences there, just um, either in chat or a quick hand up. Lorenzo, do you want to add something? Yeah, yeah. I, I just wanted to add something because I read this comment from uh, Roxana, three boy. We we who told uh, for involving the citizens, you have to recognize the distribution of power among the food system actors. The yeah. citizens do not feel empowered, recognized. Definitely, the public authorities have a significant responsibility and power in shifting measure tendencies. And this is very true because um, uh, the, in our case, the manifesto was approved by the uh, Metropolitan uh, Authority. And uh, this is a very important step that the local public authority support uh, a manifesto or a group or an uh, initiative and stuff like that. Because they can, uh, for sure, have more power. Let's say, uh, you know, uh, in uh, in in make their voice louder and 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 listen uh, by by citizens. So, so I uh, I pretty much agree with uh, this comment. Yeah, you have to really acknowledge that, and it's a there's no real answer to it. We just had actually requests or questions coming into the sustainable food places sort of question forum that we have a rise up list where questions are asked what do you do about large corporate food interests getting involved in your food partnership how do you manage that is it a good idea should we keep them out should we welcome them in the whole thing is recognizing there's a differential in power there that you have to acknowledge and be very careful about any other thoughts that people want to share or any questions that they want to put to either Alex and Lorenzo. I've just put it in the chat, Ben, but um, obviously we've only been able to scratch the surface of, of this. So I put my email, we did do a longer webinar and uh, we've got a report that we can share. So if anyone's interested, I don't know if we put it on the Food Matters website or if it's going to be there, but my email's there anyway and we can share it. Fantastic. It, will, it will be. It's not quite yet, but it will be. Uh, also, I've put a couple of links to two websites in the chat that talk about food citizenship. Um, it's a bit muddled the way I've put it in, but there are two different organisations kind of on the back of what, uh, Roxanne's question or comment. OK, well, um, unless there are any other questions, I might just um, 
ask if there's anything that anybody wants to share about this session as a whole before we finish off. Just some final thoughts, headlines that have jumped out to, at you or things that have um, really interested you or grabbed you from what you've been hearing this morning. And I might actually include some of the, uh, the session leaders in that. Um, if uh, Victoria or Stephanie or Sophia or any of the team, Beatrice, if you want to add anything to what you've been hearing, Maddie, yes, what do you want to share? I just want to want to say how much I value and appreciate the having a European perspective. You know, we often there's often a kind of up drawbridge thing between the work in the UK and further afield. So I really love food food shift for that reason. So thank you for bringing those wider perspectives. And yeah. I, um, I think that's fantastic. Thank you, Maddie. I completely agree. This is great. I'm quite often working on a UK focus. So this is wonderful to have a session like this. Thank you for that. Alex, you had the hand up. It was ex exactly the same point, <laughs> really. It's just really helped. It was really like great to hear perspectives in the breakout room and just be able to kind of think on these things in a in a broader way and though there's so many people working towards the same goals it's in, really inspiring totally any other thoughts if not i will just hand over to sophia for a little bit of a wrap-up brilliant segue into what 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 I was going to say, because there will be more opportunities for coming together with like-minded places. And maybe food citizenship can be a future theme for one of these, one more of these workshops that we have coming up, because we have three more uh, to organize in the new year. So we're happy to follow the interest of, of places. So if that's an issue that we're all struggling with, let's organize one in the new year. Let's get experiences from across Europe that we can learn from. Let's think of resources that we can share, etc. So in terms of what's coming up, so Stephanie and I are hoping to produce a blog that in, tries to encapsulate what we've learned here today that will compile all the resources that were shared here not just from us but from you and that will be that will be shared with everyone that registered for the session because a lot of people couldn't be here today so stay tuned sign up to food shift plus the discussion forum because that's a place where we can continue this conversation we can ask questions, share learnings, etc. And it's not quite Christmas yet, but I would like to leave you with three questions before we finish. Something for you to help you consolidate what you've learned today, what you've heard today. So early Christmas presents, here you go. And these questions will be on the chat as well. So first question, how could you use the approaches and the resources uh, we've we've demonstrated here and apply them in your place and in your place. Second question: Which resources could you use to help you do this? And third question: How can the experiences of Bari and East Sussex inspire you on your work? So hopefully, by reflecting on these three questions, um, it will help you to. The thinking process will help you further away um, in what you're trying to achieve at a local level. So thank you very much, everyone. A big thank you to Ben Messer for guiding us through this section. Thank you, Ben. Thank you. Um, Meet you all. Um, Maddie, you you have your hand up. Sorry, I just wanted a, a clarification point about how we how we subscribe so that's the email we put that email in subscribe at lists.riseup.net and then what so you use that long email with subscribe to sign up to the email forum and once you're signed up you will receive an automatic message then you you use the shorter email address to send the first message to the group and once you send that message it will be received by everyone that is signed up 
So how do we, so we email, subscribe. That's right. So is the email food shift plus minus, minus. Subscribe, subscribe at, okay. That's, it. That's the full email. It will work, I promise. <laughs> it doesn't just start with subscribe at, okay. Sorry, I was reading it just as the email was just subscribe at, but it's not, okay. Thank you. Yeah, we have uh, almost a hundred people subscribed already. We do want to grow it because that will be one of the legacies of, of Food Shift to continue these, these conversations that we're starting now. So it's a very, very good place to continue to, to have these conversations. So uh, a final thank you to everyone um, that helped to organize this workshop, um, Stephanie, Victoria, and to the speakers that shared um, their experiences, Lorenzo and Alex. Thank you very much, everyone.